you know, it's like compound interest. You know, if you are moving in a particular direction and it is positive, it is about, you know, feeding and seeding and community and life and love that it compounds on itself, just like negativity is compounding and, and negativity is compounding so, so much quicker. <laughs> it's so easy to destroy, but there's a tipping point of positivity where in the beginning you will be discouraged about changing your life, changing your diet, changing your friends because the negative, you know, the universe will be mad because like, what are you doing? What are you doing doing this good stuff? No, no, no. Here, here. Take this bag of potato chips. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. Let's go to the club. Here, here. Have this drink. No, no, no. Don't you want to smoke with the, you know, as soon as you start doing some good things, that's when the people start coming out and like, don't you want to, <laughs> here comes the temptation, you know, but then there's a point where you're impervious to the temptation because the goodness is so good that it is not worth it. <laughs> you're like, mm -mm, no, I've been there. No, I'm not trying to do that. And we've all been in places where we are not trying to do that again, but we somehow get sucked into it because it's almost like a comfort bubble in the muck. Sometimes the muck can be warming, inviting, you know, you sit in it long enough. You don't realize that you're actually being sucked in like quicksand until you get out and you're like, hmm, I'm not going back. And then somehow you find yourself back there because the things that got you out, you stopped doing. Like it doesn't, the, the world's not stopping because you, you know, it's like you never get to the finish line of goodness. It is an actual continuous relay race with yourself to get to the next place, to get to the next place. And I'm not saying that to say it's exhausting because it's not at some point you, you don't have to do the same things to get to the place. You just, now it just starts to compound and then community builds around you. So you don't have to work as hard because other people are like what you're doing. Oh, I want to do that too. And then you got a whole community of people doing the same thing. So it's just beautiful. I just wanted to just say that, you know, um, for those of you who may be struggling, like I changed my life and it just got worse. It, it might get worse. It's always dark as before the dawn. It might get worse for a minute, but joy comes in the morning. You know, you just got to sit through it, get through it. Most of us, when it gets too tough, we like, okay, I give, but going back is like Harriet Tubman. Okay. We're we going to be free. But we're going to have to go through this swamp. There may be some snakes in the swamp. We're going to go through this brush. You're going to get scratched by the thistle. You might, there might be dogs coming. But I promise you, when we get to Philly, <laughs> when we get to Philly, it's all good, you know. But the first snake, oh, no, at least back in Massa, you know, I got a meal. It was, and I get to make a fire. I know that I'm going to have clothes on my back. I'm not going to be bit by snakes. I'm going back to slavery. Some of us keep going back to slavery. And it seems like it's, you know, we're taken care of. And freedom, the early days are going to be tough. But when you get through, oof, nothing like it. On that note, um, there's a story I was holding. Uh, the ozone layer is healing. Good news. Let me give you all some good news. The ozone layer. Remember for forever we've been talking about the hole in the ozone layer. We've got to put on sunscreen, which we still do because, you know, the ozone layer. Because the ozone layer is going to give us cancer. It, the ozone layer, the, it's just horrible. We have, you know, aerosol cans. Remember back in the 80s, people were using hairspray and messing up the ozone layer. We were talking about the ozone layer. And now the ozone layer, apparently the scientists have said it's healing itself. It is healing itself and it will be fully mended. There's this giant hole over Antarctica in about 43 years. I plan on being here, by the way, the United Nations reported that it will be completely healed in this giant hole that's over Antarctica. It is a once in every four years scientific assessment that they've done and they've been watching this recovery process and more than 35 years after the nation in the world agree to stop using and producing chemicals that chomp away at the ozone layer, the earth's atmosphere, the shield, the shield around our planet that harm, that keeps us from the harmful radiation of the, the beautiful sun, cataracts and crop damage. It's healing. I suspect that them two years of COVID also helped at least the, the eight, nine months that the entire world sat their asses down, no airplanes in the sky. And we saw it just in two months. The, the animals were like, word, 
Well, oh, we get to be out in them streets. No people, no people, none of them horrible human. Oh, no humans. Okay, let's go. Come on, elephants and tigers and bears. Oh my, they were out in them streets. The sky cleared up. You remember it was blue. <laughs> China, even over China, it was blue. California was blue. The sky was like, oh, whew, wait a minute. No, none, none of this, none of these harmful things. It, we saw the earth heal itself in just a short period of time. And now we know that the ozone, because I feel like we are one with the planet if we really, you know, uh, know that. And if the planet is designed to heal itself, we have put it, uh, knocked it out of homeostasis, you know, because human beings are so damn damaging that we almost, but I was like, I always say Mother Earth is undefeated. She was going to shake us the F off. She's going to preserve herself. That is the first law of man and nature, self-preservation. Earth, <laughs> Earth, E-A-R-F, was going to have the last say. And she's slowly, you know, letting us know, you know. And it wasn't just COVID, you know, because COVID is, is a byproduct of the Earth saying, mm, sit your ass down. California right now, shout out to all of the folk in California. And I'm saying shout out as in prayers because there's a lot of people, you know, from the fires last year, uh, now it's floods. Uh, people are, thousands of people are fl fleeing their homes. The death toll is rising from these devastating storms that again, Mother Earth is going to have her say. Endless onslaught of this, uh, these, the rivers just, I mean, you see the highways, the roads just, I mean, torrential rains, floods, mudslides, landslides. Uh, it's just, it's ridiculous what's happening. This is around the Santa Barbara County in particular, Montecito. I think Ellen DeGeneres posted a uh, video of the river that's running through her backyard. Uh, 10,000 residents were ordered to evacuate. Uh, yeah, and it has killed 23 people. Uh, and this is about 90 miles northwest of Los Angeles. And tomorrow, I think they're going to get hit with another storm. So, yeah, Mother Earth, and she's going to definitely let us know what will and will not happen. But it's encouraging to know. And I'm sitting here right now. I have not used plastic throughout the um, to drink water. And I was, you know, I don't drink water out of my tap because I don't trust Jersey. I don't trust, the, I don't trust oranges like that. I don't trust, you know, it used to be a time when New York city had the best water and you could trust the reservoirs and certain, I ain't trusting none of that, but as if I could trust the bottled water, I don't know what the source is. I know some of them waters, just tap water that they put a, you know, Hey Pepsi and y'all allegedly Aquafina. And them. Mm -mm. Anyway, um, you know, some, some of these waters that are out there are just tap water. They've, they've studied it. So I went on uh, Google search, like the best, bottled water ever you know came across you know these different waters that i ordered and i have uh had cases of them but then i was like you know what i don't need the plastic and the plastic leeches i don't know what's leached into this water from the you know maybe they had these bottles sitting out in the sun i don't know so i have been metal so first i i found path and then now i have a water filtration system and i just fill up my little metal nubia um you know, my Nubia, what do you call this, mug with my metal straw. And that's what I drink. Now I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. I don't even use plastic anymore because I want to do my part. And this year I promised myself to, you know, move into an electric vehicle. But how easy is it for us to adapt? I feel like we we adapt pretty well here. I remember um, also like a few, what was it, six months ago, the, the store stopped giving giving out the bags. And I thought I would pass out because I, the first couple of times I went in the store with no bag, I'm walk, walking out the store with an arm full of groceries <laughs> that I'm juggling because I ain't have a bag and I'm too cheap to buy. I ain't spending no $5 for a bag when I got 10 of them at home. You know what I'm saying? It's like I was like buying bags every time I was at the store. But now it's like I got bags in my car and I'm like, oh, we adapted so quickly to, to carrying bags into the grocery store to bag our own stuff because ain't nobody giving you a bag if you're in Jersey. I don't know. Is this a rule other places? Because I know in Jersey, you're not getting a bag at the grocery store. You're going to have to come in with your own bag. And um, it looks like since it's Tech Tuesday, Whole Foods is trying to eliminate your ability to even have to get your stuff bagged. Like they're, they've been experimenting with you coming in and bagging your stuff and <laughs> and putting it, you know, and, and doing a barcode thing with, a, with, the, with the carriage. So your shopping cart will now be equipped 
with the boop, boop, boop to be able to boop, boop your own thing and put it right in bag yourself and then be out. And I was like, "Mm mm-mm. All you people who this is your, you know, your, your livelihood know that they are replacing you. Like McDonald's is looking at the robots. So everybody, Ooh, I'm going to work at McDonald's when I get out in high school. Mm, that may not be a job for you. So y'all need to be looking into other things. Cause I feel like we got about maybe two or three years before we're replaced by machines completely. I said it. Remember I said it, mark this day, January 10th, Karen had to say, we're going to probably not have as many jobs cause they are planning some things and I feel like we need to be ahead of it but uh, I just wanted to deliver some good news and also as an encouragement if the ozone layer can heal itself like our bodies we are designed to be self-healing self-cleaning all of that when we do the right things when we don't put things in our body that our body's confused by Dr. Senyata last week was saying you know when we eat some of these um, you know red dyes and fructose the, the liver's like I don't know what that is So let me store it over here. (laughs) Maybe it'll become a tumor that's bad. I don't know, but I'm not familiar with this, so I can't really break it down. So I'm going to throw this uh, high fructose or this processed something or this, you know, McDonald's burger bun or this yoga mat from Subway's. I don't think they use that anymore. I'm going to store that over here. It may turn into something bad in your body, but we don't know what this is. (laughs) But you can reverse that. Those of you, you know, with the type 2 diabetes, you know the type 2 diabetes can be reversed when you change your diet. High cholesterol can be reversed when you change your diet. The body wants to heal. Every night you go to sleep, that's how I think about it. It's like every night I go to sleep, I want to give my body the best chance it has so when I wake up, everything that needs to be repaired is repaired. So I'm going to drink me a little water, not too close to bedtime because I'll be up peeing all night, but I'm going to give it all of the things, you know, Dr. Dr. Sidiata got me on this um, Udo oil. I may take a little of that with some water, maybe my vitamin C. I put my vitamins in at night because I'm like, that's going to help with the free radicals. Like I have this whole <laughs> thing in my mind, go gather up the free radicals while I'm sleeping. Go ahead, do your thing, body. Do what you're supposed to do. Clear out everything. And then I wake up, you know, go for my walk come back, you know, lemonade, shower, ready for the show, all of that stuff. But the body's made to do that. And we know because the earth is doing that and we are of the earth. 